Okay, first of all, welcome. Welcome to the event. We've not seen except me running around each other before. Um, I'm very glad everybody's here. Before we start with the session, the most important thing, there's a fridge over there. And it's a fridge in all of the rooms here. And everybody of you is very welcome to take a bottle out of the fridge and help yourself with drinks. It's all free, it's all paid, just help yourself. So before we start, if someone wants to have something to drink, get your drinks, everything is there. Warum jetzt? Pan? I'm one of the founders of the Juma project. I'm running my own consultancy service company since over 15 years now. I've uh, been involved in Joomla and all the stuff for a very long time. What I want to talk today is about projects itself. And what we're going to talk about is not dedicated to Joomla. You can use it for any project you like, but we'll try to put on some emphasis on topics which are related to um, web projects in common things. Um, I don't focus on special websites like a commercial website or a private website. All what we're going to talk about will be applicable for all kinds of websites. In some cases, it will be more important to focus on one thing or the other, but that's something we're going to figure out. Could I ask your favor and close the door of the fridge again? To, otherwise, the fridge will... All of us to think, start thinking about, we are now trying to do a project, a website together. As we don't know each other, the first thing would be a good thing to start to introduce yourself. Just say your name. What is your primary role? Are you a developer or you a web agency or are you doing just using an extension like Joomla or Joomfish, eh, a website? And um, so that everybody in the room has some ideas about uh, to whom to you're speaking. André, uh, not André, <laughs> Gerald, sorry. Um, <laughs> May I ask you uh, to start, please? My name is Joe Walter. I'm from CRBM AG in Switzerland. Uh, we are doing uh, some stuff in uh, customer relationship management and CMS hosting and development consultancy. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Jörg Fritz. I am doing uh, customer websites in Joomla, mainly for small and medium sized customers. Okay, perfect. Hi. Uh, my name is Hum, so I uh, you know where I come from. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm a CEO of uh, Junjax. I'm running uh, Any of you know about Junjax? Yeah, I know about Junjax. So, yeah, I wanted to maybe the most popular template for my And if you have a chance, you can drop my website to uh, visit and, and to browse to see if any design that can fit. Your requirement, and then also I will be expecting you to vote for our template tomorrow. Ah, so come on, no commercials. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no commercials. Thank you. Me as my partner, come uh, together with me from uh, June 19th. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Thomas. Uh, I'm working in a web agency, and my job is uh, basically uh, marketing. My name is Franz. I come from a book publishing company in Munich. I'm a journalist by training, and my first and foremost interest is to see how Joomla can be used as a means and a vehicle for transporting information concerning um, conversion and conversion content. Yeah. Yeah, hello, my name is Mario. I'm a, a main uh, professional currently SAP security consultant. So something completely different. <laughs> but uh, looking to move away from a little bit and entering the world. Yeah. Uh, my name is Emily and uh, I'm from Norway, a company called Already On. We're uh, doing custom websites 
seeing you Ma, and I'm working both as a designer and as a project leader in your mom projects. Okay. Well, hi, my name is Norbert. I uh, work for a company that is also doing customer websites, a small medium business. Mainly I'm the tablet designer and I'm trying to fulfill the customer's needs. So I but I dig rather deep into it. Okay. Hello, I'm Isidro, I come from Spain. Um, I'm a freelancer uh, doing jubilee-based customer sites for small small medium businesses. Okay. Hello, I'm Kerry, I'm from the UK. Um, I run a business called Whitacle, I'm the main designer there, as well as many other things in the counter and the product manager and just about everything. So, yes. okay. I'm Kelly Pills, I'm from Holland, and well, I'm actually using Joomla as a software integrator from two multiple sites. Interested in building a home? I have a Design, so everything we need for a successful project is inside the room. Perfect. Um, let's start from the beginning, if my computer works. Um, I will give you a short overview. We start in the beginning, to give you some, get some basic terms ready, and everybody has the same understanding of stuff. I'll try to talk about a very, very little bit about C as the CMS solutions and Joomla, and especially the aspect of what is important for us in the project, the different roles of the different people, because that's most important for having a successful project that everybody knows which role he has or she has and what is important in that role, how we do it, and a little summary at the end. So in the beginning, um, there was my question is about, okay, why should a customer, well, I'm, I'm taking my customer hat on, I would like to have a new corporate website for my company. So why should I use a CMS? So now, the first thing, I'm a very alone person. I have no clue about websites except using them. So what should I as a customer do? I will definitely not go to the internet and look, oh, there's Joomla. I, I'm going to use Joomla. This is not what's going to happen. What's going to happen definitely is that there is someone I'm talking to and say, hey, my friend, I'm going to use a website. Do you have any clue how to do that? Then maybe I talk to Gerald and Gerald tells me yes. What, what, what would you answer? If I ask, I would like to have a website. Ah, a good question. So then we start at the point that you as the first contact start to ask questions and figure out if the CMS or whatever other solution is best. And for the project, this is the most important key. It does not matter if this is a private conversation, a customer comes into your office, they call you, whatever. It doesn't matter if they have heard about Joomla or any other CMS. I have people approaching me telling me, oh, Alex, uh, we need to have a website done in Type 3. Can you help us? The first question I still ask, um, what the heck you want to have with you, done with your website? And are you sure Type 3 is the best solution for you? Did you evaluate that? And after these questions, people start to think about their project. And then they need someone who's taken them at hand and say, come on, now I guide you through this process. Now the important thing is that where, for example, the, the developers here which are, have web agencies, in a typical situation in your web agency, especially if you're 
one side designer, other side your project manager or whatever, you are mixing up roles. Because the first role is the supporter, the person who understands the needs of the customer. And the customer wants you exactly in that role. But it doesn't want you to be in the role of salesperson already. And you really need to be very careful to get into these roles and answer these questions and think about, okay, what is the best CMS solution? And it must not be Joomla. It can definitely be Drupal. It can be Typo. It can be whatever WordPress. I don't care. Get the best solution for your customer needs based on what Gerald said. Try to find out what the customer wants. So when we have this, what Franz just said, he wants to see if Joomla is applicable for information, publishing, presenting information. This is absolutely open to any CMS still. We're still talking about any CMS which is available in the market. Um, there are solutions like enterprise content management systems. And I know, does everybody know what's different between web content management and enterprise content management is? Someone not familiar with the terms? Here? Um, the typical web content management system is Joomla. You have something installed on the website, everything's fine. So now, Joomla, Drupal, and all the other CMS, which are open source, free available, have made a huge impact to the market of open text or red dot or others. So they said, okay, we need to do something new, something which our customers still pay for. So what they added is, beside the web content management part, document management, collaboration, workflows, and all these other things. And all that together, they call web content management, enterprise content management systems. So in some cases, this is important. Most, most of the times, it's important for big enterprises. For example, SAP, there's an integration between SAP and enterprise content management systems, so that, for example, you can present your stock information directly or whatever or you have your, your shop directly talking to your um, ERP system where you have your bookkeeping and stuff done. What is also important, some of the customers come, for example, with a crazy idea. Oh, we have a lot of documents and we want to get them managed. Uh, these documents, there should be a workflow. People should be able to, talk, uh, to comment on the documents and stuff like that. Uh, we could put that in a wiki, can we? Oh, yes, you can but you can't get the information out of the wiki anymore. So it's not only too important to understand what information the customer wants to publish, but all the, what he wants to do with the information after they are in the system. And there's no need of these documents if they are in the wiki and nobody can get them out anymore. That's, yeah, just not usable. Um, <coughs> one question I always have, and that's the same question I was asked already, is what's content? And content is so many things. Content is our wiki side. Is this shelf? That's better. Um, so our wiki, our wiki side is content, of course. It's very simple, just content linked with everything. We're using very successfully the wiki for the documentation from Joomla. I don't know who knows the documentation area from Joomla. One, two, three. There's a website on joomla.org where you have a documentation, docs.joomla.org. A lot of documentation in a wiki about Joomla, about development, about usage, about user portals, user information, everything. You find a lot of stuff there. Another thing, videos. Today, videos is the most important media we have. People don't read anymore. I experience this every day with our own projects. Uh, no, uh, there was a written documentation. Oh, I'm sorry, I've not read that. Yes, of course not. There's no video. We are moving everything to videos now, which is quite hard for us. 
and I'm very lucky for our cameraman that because they know how to do it, I don't. But that's content too. Google makes this content available for us in an electronic way, but still these books are very, very important. And of course, our websites. But on the websites, the advertising over here is content too. And you need to provide these content and advertising. And a lot of people require these things. So we need to think about that in our projects. Even before we have written any line of code, anything, we, we just try to get what's going on. And last but not least, this is content too. It's content at, from Google. But these search engine terms and everything what is listed uh, in, in Google is something we need to take care about as well. And we need to control. So we need to know which pages will be indexed by Google and which not. And why. OK, so far we have now figured out what our customer wants as the first part. So let me note this down. We know now the idea. What is wanted? So our customer actually has the information. We asked him, we spoke with him. Now, the next part, what is always important for me, and I'm having all the time troubles with customers when they approach me, is to get these roles sorted out. Uh, yes, I as a agency, as a developing company, I can write a quote to the customer and say, okay, your website will be 10,000 euro. No problem. But the problem then starts is that the customer at some point tries to talk to the designer. The designer talks to the customer and they get, start moving with ideas. And these ideas flow and flow and we'll have more ideas and then they integrate more content and they integrate more stuff. And I'm as a project manager, I'm wondering, um, they have three days for design. Why are they working after two weeks still on the design? So these roles are not very clear sometimes for the customer to whom to talk to, why to talk to these persons. And we all try to, to be in a very interactive community within Joomla as well as within to our customers. That's why I find it very personally important to get some roles very precisely sorted out between us as provider, service provider, to the customer and to all those people involved. The first one is the idea and implementation. And what I do is definitely I have one person in charge within our company who's the owner of the idea. I don't know who in the room has ever heard about Scrum. Franz must have heard because he uh, has published a book about it. <laughs> <coughs> okay, Scrum is a methodology of software development. It's a very I, I once described it as the American interpretation of collaborative working in Asia. So Scrum tries to get a group of people together and really build up a group idea and make them working together. So this is a very, very, very simple explanation. But there's one thing in Scrum which is very essential. That's the definition of roles. And there's one product owner. And there's only one. There's not two, there's one in the whole product. So now I take the website as our project. There's one product owner. Oh, the company has a manager and a person in charge for the website and there's a person in charge, no. One product owner. The company, your customer has to decide who is this product owner? And after they decided, really make them focusing on that. If the manager wants to have a word in the project, he should go to the product owner if it's not himself. So if there is someone else 
if there is someone who's responsible for content, make them go to the product owner. It's helpful for you. It's not that you need to use Scrum, but it's helpful to have one person in charge. So this person in charge, um, Caroline, you are a user. Can you please be our product owner? So you are in charge of the project website we're going to create. What's the name of the project website? Fun ideas. Yeah. Okay, fun ideas is our project website. To whom you like to go now, as with, with your ideas, everything what you have in mind, with your fun ideas, to whom you like, would love to talk now. As you are the product owner, you need to get this done. What's I, it? I want a website fun ideas. Yeah. How I should, um, well, I should find someone who can. I'm not a user, right? Yeah, you're a user. We, we are all here for you. <laughs> I should find someone who can take, take charge of the technical areas of the, of the website. Okay. Well, I should have one and I should have one who, uh, or that should be myself and I should have one who takes care of the content. Okay. And maybe someone who takes care of the design. Okay. So let's try to find someone here in the room uh, who could take care about the technical details for the website. Someone here who has experience with that. What do you mean by technical? Mm. Website hosting, making sure, right, I don't know, ask her. <laughs> well, I need uh, website hosting, make sure there is a website again. I can hire a designer who well, draws up a nice uh, thingy. It should look like that, and then he could do that on paper. And then you should be able to transfer that into wallets that I would see on my screen. But uh, I think technically, uh, design is also a technical issue, right? And putting the design into a working website, I mean, this is working where you can input content and change things, also a technical issue. Yeah, well, I see two roles. I see one transferring, well, for a designer, I could hire someone else who could just draw a really nice one. It should look like that, but he doesn't have a clue about CSS or PHP or how to build it into, well, HTML or whatever. He just draws a paper and it should look like that. Okay. And I need someone who can transfer that into, well, like you can see it on a website, on a screen. Hong, could you do that? Yes, but who will you talk to first? No, no, the, po the point, well, she is already talking, you know? You realize something? You realize something? You're now in a new role. You're a member of our team. And what happens actually, um, so what ha happens actually is something which is a very typical situation in the projects I'm in. You have someone as a customer with a crazy idea who's approaching the team, everything, and then it starts to get crazy. And you ask me a question, which I wasn't able to answer, and I redirected you back to the customer. Right. So, what is important for you now is, you have two more roles in this idea and implementation part. That's one role which is defined by this person who is a little bit trying to hold all the loose ends in the hand, which we typically call the project manager. In Scrum, it's called the Scrum master, it doesn't matter. It's one person in your company. Now, my role as this person of moderation is first of all not to take over responsibility for anything. So, I'm not able to answer your questions. So, I should step away and say, please, go to the customer and ask. 
it's wrong that I try to answer something which I have listened maybe from her and in interpret. So it's very important for you in your project to make sure that the third row, which is the team, those who are implementing this project, really try to speak as direct as possible to your customer. Yes, of course, they will need guidance. Yes, of course, it's required that you make sure that they are um, working structured on the project and everything. But it's important that you as a project manager do not take over the ownership of answering questions for the customer. Because that's something which will definitely get wrong. Because you are not the customer. You have not the requirements in mind. So it's very important that these things are sorted out. And now we figured out one very important thing because of your questions. She needs someone who helps her with a creative idea. And she expects this person to be not familiar with websites in terms of technical realization. Well, now someone else from the team can say, okay, I can create the website CSS, I can create the template, the design work. We need maybe someone who's helping us with the hosting because we need to think about a high volume website and we need to make sure that the website has enough bandwidth. Uh, all these things now are being questions which are able to be asked to Caroline as a customer. <coughs> <coughs> And um, then after that, um, as it has been uh, asked this question, we can decide if we need more people with specialized skills or not. But it doesn't make sense if you like to run a successful website in the beginning to start assuming and say, okay, I sent a salesperson to her and the salesperson is asking all the questions, having a checklist, whatever, and comes back and then tells the team what's been the project and what should be developed. This will not work. Get her to you. Get her into your office and talk to her. One other point you mentioned, it's article and pictures, it's content. So definitely you need to have someone in charge of these articles and pictures. I would argue from my personal experience that 90% of the websites are being delayed because of missing articles and pictures. It's fact. <laughs> yes, it's fact. Okay, we, we, it's not only my personal experience, we have 90% in general. So, all web agencies, everybody is waiting for the customer to deliver material. How can we overcome the issue? How are you overcoming the issue? Not an issue. Pardon? We put some chamber text into the design. Oh, wow. Okay. We normally schedule the content we need, so we say to the customer, okay, we talked about the functionality and the design, and now we need to sort of lay out that we schedule for you completing and just schedule the content. Um, and we, are, we help them to understand which content we need. Does it work? Yeah, 50% of the time. Okay. <laughs> Do you mean delay uh, to, to go online or yeah. only to go to the next step? Of Both. Because for the second one for development, I, I know a station called Dummy Text and Dummy Image. Okay. <laughs> Smart solution too. Okay. My actually, uh, what I do is I limit the websites to the content we have. So I reduce everything. I get rid of. So the, the first time customer typically, typically come to me and say, oh, Alex, we have a huge website. We like to have this, 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 this in the website. I say, oh, nice. <laughs> so what's the most important article? Oh, this one. And the second important one, this one. Okay. I'll start with that. When I'm done with that, you'll see your website. Uh, really? Yeah, but we need all, I know that you need all the rest. But we start first with these two. 
And actually, I have already published websites with four pages based on Joomla CMS because the customer has not been able to deliver more content. And I don't care because, hey, the website is there, the design is there, everything's there, your primary content, the most important content for you is there. So these customers run with this website for three months. And after three months, the pressure was so high from their customers to put in additional content that they hired someone to write this content. But guess what? All the content they listed in the beginning is not there today because all the requested content is something totally new. The customers came to them and say, oh, uh, yeah, this kind of content, uh, no, we don't want that, we want this. So the whole website is to today totally changed and has a totally different structure than even the customer expected it to be because of the requirements of their customers, which is, from my perspective, perfectly fine. That's exactly what I want. The people should not try to guess what a customer does, and our customers normally is doing the same failure than we do. They also guess instead of just listen. Editing structure. Yes, the structure is most important, but as I just said, Structure is something you can limit it to the absolutely minimum. You can start with a website which has only a top navigation because that's everything what you need. You don't need to have submenus. You don't need to have three languages on your website. You don't need to have a shop and anything included. In the very first beginning, there's most of the times just one, two, three articles which are most important for the customer. Get these things out, get them presented, present the design. And last but not least, there is something which I say workflow and administration. That's the typical standard things. Uh, you need to have something like a regular presentation of what's going on. I typically do one thing in very common. I have a prototype website which is available on a server from us. And every week there is a release of our work on that server. And I don't care if we have 50% done or 10% done or 80% done. Every single Friday there's a release for our customer because our customer wants to see our progress and he should be able to give us feedback. And the most thing I can do wrong is to hide. The worst thing you can do is hiding in, the, in your office and not giving your customer feedback. Because there's always a very risk, and I, I, I'm sure everybody heard this sentence already. Oh, your quote is so expensive. My friend, dash, my son, dash, my, um, I don't know what, offered me to do that f for free. Or uh, another friend of mine said, this should only cost half the price. You all heard that sentence, I'm sure. Well, why are you hearing that? Because you're using a CMS, which is a very intuitive system. It's a very simple thing. So, get into your role as a customer. Think about your own private website. You like to publish a blog. What is the first thing you do? Suggestion, what's your own private website, your blog, what's the first thing you do, you do? Plan how often you publish. <laughs> <laughs> Honest? <laughs> you! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, some other suggestion? Pardon? You get the software, you can download the blogging software, install it, and never use it. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes, of course. I get my web space somewhere on a web server, I get the software installed, and look how it looks like. Then I download a template, say, oh, that's a cute template, I want to have this template, and then, as you said, I'm writing the first article, I'm done. Yes. 
oh, it might not stop. I write the next year. It's no problem. But in fact, if you do your own private website, you like, the, the important thing is to do it. And the important thing is, oh, I can play it. Oh, Joomla Art just released a new uh, a template. Oh, this looks cute. And the menu, I like to have that. Get the new menu in. Yeah? Get, get the new template in, change the website. That's what you do. Now, can someone explain to me, please, why your customer should be different? No, they are not different. They want to play. And they have a very intuitive CMS, which is called Joomla. And it's awesome. They can play. Yes. I would argue there are 10% of those customers I have. <laughs> Maybe I don't get them, but I know they're there, but not very typically for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, th I think you're right. And I think the... Correct. Okay, so, but there's a very simple solution for that. Don't present it. Yeah? The point what you can do is if you have a server which is available for the customer, which is not your development server, every single week you can push all that stuff which is at least as you say, and you're totally correct with that, in the degree of being as complete, as acceptable for the customer, get it there. Let them play. Well, I tell all my customers, this is my web server. If you add content there, you are a fool. I don't care about your content there. That's my web server. As long as your website is not installed on your web server, I don't care about the content. So before you start editing something and structuring and expect me to keep this content, get back to me. Then we give you a system which you can play with, work with, but this is for playing. And as you said, you're right. It's not good to present the customer every little single step. That's why I'm doing it once a week. Because within five days, you normally achieve certain things. And if you get yourself regular knowing on Friday, the last thing I'm going to do is to upload the website for the customer, you will make sure that you're not starting something completely fresh on Friday. But you will work to get these things which being presented to the customer on Friday being complete. So this is a, a, something like a re procedure for you. OK? <coughs> yeah. Our CMS, we, we just have dummy content. Um, and done, yeah, but innovative content, that's not really existing. So yes, we need to have us as human beings to present and create the content. It's the same thing like we are not able to use the video which we tape here directly on the internet. So we need to do something with that. These are things which need to be done. You need to organize them. You get them organized. You need to make your customer aware that these things need to be, be done. Um, for me, one of the astonishing things was uh, to, uh, to find out how often a CMS is being used while I don't expect it. And it's far more often than I expected it. So if you look at websites, uh, try to look at them carefully. And very often you will see that there's some kind of CMS. And there are about 1,000 something CMS known in the world which are actively maintained. But there are millions of individual solutions which are actually CMS kind of solutions as well. 
So you get something like a database or some coding scripts on, on a lot of stuff, which makes it sometimes very hard to get the content from one system to the other if you want to migrate. OK. Uh, we have a title. We have a website. We need to get back to that. We'll come back to that. Um, one of the important things um, for me is always to make it as, diff uh, as easy as possible. So I don't like complex things. So that's why I try to treat a website for a customer not differently than any other project. So I write a quote. I have a plan for the timing. I do have uh, resources which I plan where I say, okay, I like to use the ESD design and this, like you said before, uh, giving the time boxes when we need which content and stuff like that. Uh, that's something I do for any project and I do it for websites as well. This will reduce the complexity in your company and reduce complexity in your work. Um, use the advantages of technology. Um, Tumul Art is in Vietnam, Gerald is in Switzerland, Caroline is in the Netherlands, Mike is in Germany, you are all in UK, Spain, Germany, and you are in Germany as well. So, um, if we ask Hong to create the template for us, how should we communicate with him without using the advantages of technology? We need to have something like Skype for instant chat. We need to have a good group. We might need to use Google at a docs or any other kind of web duff, Dropbox things uh, to share the documents, the files in between to make sure these things are there. Uh, make sure that within your web agency, your infrastructure is right so that everybody can access it because these things will be essential for your teams. I'm working now over six years in international teams with time zones crazy from Australia to somewhere in Seattle. Uh, without these tools, you are lost. And it will become more, even if you are an individual. For example, I try, I'm, I'm not a designer. I'm capable of understanding how CSS works. But if I see what Joomla Art or Rocket Theme or other design teams do with CSS, I'm always like, uh-huh, okay, wow. So I trust them. They can do this better than me. Wonderful. So I outsource this part of the business. I get a designer, for example, for the project who's doing me a Photoshop file. So. I get a Photoshop file, and I have certain requirements on the Photoshop file. Like, it should have layers, it should have all images included in a high resolution, stuff like that. And I use this Photoshop file and hand it over to someone like Kim from Hong and others and say, create a Joomla template for me. I make it a high professional template using frameworks doing this and this. It costs me far less than me doing it. And it's professional. So I get that. This might be the designer is in Germany with me because that's more easy for the communication or in the Netherlands. And there we have Vietnam. So we need to make sure we have all the same versions of the files and everything. So a lot of things that take advantage of these possibilities you have. And as I said before, get it done, get it visible. Like you have it on paper, you have it on the Photoshop file, get a wireframe which you can easily click just to get the first feeling how it will behave. If you, after the wire, everybody knows what a wireframe is? The designer know? Yeah? Everybody? Wireframe clear? Okay. So get it done. Get it in HTML. After you have it in HTML, get your website being uh, implemented as template. Get your template in Joomla. Use the sample content in Joomla and have your first impression of the website. And then you can start. Start playing around. Which extensions do you need and all that stuff? Okay? We have half an hour? Half an hour more. Right? Du hast ein Programm? Navigation and content. Now, 
This slide is typically for those people which have no clue about Joomla or CMS solutions and everything. Um, so we can skip it here because everybody knows. Yes, of course, we have a separation. And I'm, as I say here, I use paper and pencil with all my customers. Yeah, because on the computer, the customer is just going crazy. If I start directly to work in the menu system, menu manager, to create a navigational structure for him, they go mad. They have no clue what I'm going to do. So paper, pencil, this works. Creating a navigational structure, creating an initial structure for the content. Lucky us, it's the time of the CKKs, so we don't have to bother with category and section anymore. We have unlimited categories. We can use whatever we want, structure it as it fits to the customer needs. Perfect. We're done. Joomla 1.6 will offer us the same. But that's really done then. Other thing is for me, think about the content. There we are back to the point we had before. What videos do we have? Which pictures? How are the pictures being presented? Do I need to have um, picture galleries, stuff like that? Um, K2, for example, I'm not very familiar with the other uh, CKK systems. I would love to be in the Flexi uh, talk, which is right now downstairs, so I'm missing that again. Hopefully, Manuel will do another one. Um, the, the important thing with these tools is that you can structure your content and prepare some more templates. So you give something more as a template, as a structure to your customer for the usage later. But this requires from you as a web agency to think about these different type of templates, different structures before. This is something which will develop, but you also have to have a an idea about what you're going to use. And of course, this can result in extremely nice websites. I don't know this, how this was supposed to work. I think it just works. Yes. This one website has been rebuilt meanwhile, I think. Uh, it's one of the United Nations website. We'll later on have a talk from uh, Matthew from South Africa about websites being used in South Africa for nonprofit organizations. These are the biggest websites I know. Chrisilla is a social media website from MTV, which is based on the Joomla framework. It's not initially Joomla, it's not using, but it's Joomla framework usages. Um, it's one of the biggest websites Joomla has, also in terms of traffic numbers. Guggenheim Museum of Modern Art. I think that's all one familiar name and very confusing to see this here, but it's a Joomla website and it's one of those websites where you don't expect Joomla to be the CMS. Who's using Google Analytics, Google AdWords and everything for your customers? Okay. Um, have you been asked by your customers to use something different than Google Analytics? Not yet? Okay. Who knows Pivik? P-I-W-I-K. Ah, one. Pardon? Pivik. Is it called? False sec? Yeah. It's uh, user behavior analysis. Ah, okay. It's uh, analyzed uh, clicks and... Okay. And I don't know that one. How's it spelled? F-O. F-O? Uh, e, yeah. G, G. Oh, okay. okay, Pivik is a competitor of um, 
Pivik is a competitor of uh, Google Analytics. Not yet, but soon will be. It's an open source project which is actually doing the same as analytics. It behaves very similar to analytics. You can install it from source code. It's a very small footprint at the moment. It allows you to have various uh, customers uh, with their different websites and web projects being included. So you have a, a system which you can install on one of your servers for all of your customers. It works similar like with integration of a JavaScript. For that, I, I don't know. But uh, the interesting thing of this project is you are the owner of your data. And Tim O'Reilly recently said on a conference, and I think he's saying this already over the last years, the data is the key. Who is the owner of the data is the person who will be making the most money in future. So yes, it's nice to give the data to Google, but also to keep it, it's also nice. Something we just should think about. Um, if you have integrations, like for example, integration with AdWords and Google Analytics, this gives you a lot of power. It makes sense to combine it. Uh, there are different ad server solutions, which also then integrate, for example, with Pivik, which gives you similar power. However, not using Google. I don't know. I personally have removed Google. Well, I, I personally removed Google from all our websites after they announced that they will track the user behavior over one website. And this change was, I think, last year or something. And at that point, I decided I don't want to have Google on my websites anymore. So they're all gone from us. Everybody needs to decide this for himself. Um, one of the most important things what we all miss in the normal scenarios is blogger and press relationships. I see this very, very often that people just forget about the fact that there is a written press. If you are in the field of being a web agency for your customers, it is essential not only that you blog or that you bring all your customers into the um, internet world, but it's also essential to make sure that the written press is thinking about your event or your website or your customer. Because to drive people to your website, you need to have as many possible ways. And this is still one very powerful way. I'm pretty sure we have not been here with the event if we would not have been using bloggers and press very intensively. We nearly in the last Six weeks, we informed them about three times with a press release what's going on in Jane and Beyond. And this was something where, which really increased our effect to find new sponsors or get more attention, stuff like that. So this was really important. Are we done? Um, yeah, not really. First of all, we had this before. Now, Caroline is ready with her website. She has dropped her design. She dropped the technical things. Website is there. She reviewed the first version. Everything's there. Everything's fine. But then there happens something which is very, very important for the website. There need to be one person in charge for the content. So there needs to be one person. Might not be her because she is just the person who created the website. But then there needs to be a takeover. I've seen this very often, um, that the person in charge became the secretary of the boss. Yes, I can train her. She can use Joomla. It's no problem at all. However, it's most of the times not she or the assistant who is the person really able to write the content. And most of the time what happens is that the person who is writing the content doesn't have the final say in that, yes, we publish this content. So make this person empowered to be in charge of this content. Otherwise, you get an issue. So they need to punish the employees in the company to give me the article, the information, the content. And in the end, they don't need to ask the boss, am I allowed to publish this content? there must be one person in charge, and this person is in charge and allowed to. 
Otherwise, the website will be presented, will be visible, will be nice. After three months, it's been old. This is not what we want. Um, one of the most important things what I see very, very often is a website using a template which is available, but then changing the logo, changing some other parts, which is absolutely OK. I don't know, your license as well for developers is that the developer can change everything and uh, resell it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is perfect. You know, we as developers, site integrators, we have professional support. We can buy these, uh, these templates, rebuild them for the customer needs. You don't have the hassle to go to the whole design. You save money and time. Perfect. But then please, do the favor and make it consistent. If you use the logo style and the typo, everything from one template, make sure that it's consistent, being used everywhere. Not that, oh, I installed another extension, but this extension comes with different CSS, and the CSS there overrides the one from the template, and there's a different font. No. Make it consistent. That's the most important step, and the most important thing you need to do while testing and review. Make sure the website is in, uh, completely consistent. Also, these little tiny icons called uh, whatever fuff icons. I don't want to see a corporate website custom built with the standard Joomla fuff icon. I don't want to see them anymore. Please replace or at least remove it. As said, after the website has been published, it's not over. The customer comes with new ideas. You will have new extensions. Everything will become new. Most important thing, where is your development machine? You don't want to install a new extension on the live website. Make sure the customer gets something like his playing field. Remember the website on your own server where the customer can play. There you can install safe a new extension without having the hassle of, oh, this extension or update is now breaking the whole website. Oops. And one of the most important things, the design might get old. After half a year, a year, two years, you need to refurnish the website. Your content will never be old. It doesn't matter how old it is, people will read it. Have a look on your statistics. And, as we said already, pay attention to what your customer says and their customer says. So check and verify the analytics and static data. See whether people really click to. It doesn't matter. Successful, you, can, you have a lot of content, nobody reads it. Restructure your website. Make the content easy accessible, which has been read most. That's it from my part. Now we have 15 minutes to fulfill our project, answer some more questions, or get more coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> questions? No questions? I have one. Yes? Uh, in the presentation, you said. said there's one person in charge of the project there's one product owner 
And in the end, the product owner has to make the final decision. So you're totally right. These are three people who are working very closely together to get the website done. But in the end, the product owner will do the final decision and say, no, we need to have this long content or not. And either one of them has to adapt. Yeah. It's, um, there's only, my experience says there's only a few situations in which you have such a hard decision. Most of the time you find a compromise between the two different solutions, but in general you can say there is a final say of the product owner because you want your website. And when? When do you uh, the actually your design to design the website? When? I mean, when you have already the content yeah. or before you get the content because this so I normally start with having first the design. First design. Yeah, that's and what I saw normally. There are uh, that the designer have very little knowledge about the content. That's true. Because if you, if you know nothing about what you are going to present to the user, okay, you may use some, like, uh, uh, you have said, a dummy content, but somehow when you to put the real value to the design, it breaks. I know. Um, you have, for example, the same issue if you have websites uh, with multilingual websites. In the one language, it works, looks perfectly well, everything fine. The other language is just uh, having too long words, and then it breaks all the design headlines, whatever. Um, the experience says that or my, at least my experience says, that most of the time the customer is a very visual person. So having something like a basic design is something which helps the customer to understand if you understand him right. Um, on the other side, yeah, it might be able to, that the wireframe step in between before you really get a template is a possible cut where you say, okay, now, before we create the template, we want to have at least this kind of content. And then you maybe identify in this process already, that you say, these are the critical elements of the content. For example, these are the two primary languages, so we need to have the content, one example in this language, one example in this language. And that you try to get them some good examples at that point. Um, the wireframes are easy and cheap to create. So it's a very simple situation in which you can um, optimize still a lot before you go in the process of creating templates. Okay? Some more questions. Yes. Uh, I know it uh, a long time ago. Uh, I think in the first, one of the first implementations, I actually left it because uh, it wasn't powerful enough in the beginning. Yeah. Is it now, uh, well, uh, they have it, a, it's not yet an, an alternative to the analytics, but yeah, now it's, it's close. It's getting close. Uh, they released very recently the 06, I think, or 061 release which includes now a quite good uh, user management, changing of passwords, and the, the, the typical administrative parts, which were missing for a long time. Um, beside that, it's a good system to have um, a, a basic overview. It's not as detailed as analytics yet. Even with the widgets they have, there are not all the widgets available, but for the typical standard analytics, it works already. Um, I'm using it now on three big websites, also to testing them on high load, and it works quite well. Yeah, so it's also the server is not uh, stressed too much, so it works quite well in the background, the current version. And I, at the moment they release more or less every four weeks a new version, so they're pretty fast in their development at the moment. When I say he should play with your content and get used to the system. 
means he should maybe add a new menu navigation item or add new articles or add a translation or whatever, but he's not playing and changing design anymore. Maybe except within the borders you give him about parameters of the design template, but not in general. Yeah, so up th this release is really after the wireframe for me it's an ending point. The design, there's a milestone. Design completed, done. Mark, I write an invoice, done. Design is done. That's also one thing. I'm, I'm trying to get away from these big budgeted projects. I personally write very often invoices. Tell my customers, you know, this will be the whole sum of money you're going to pay. But you will get an invoice when I, you have the design ready in these, these days. This works. Okay. I have a general question to you. Yep. Uh, from your <coughs> experience, what are or what are the two, two things you should not do if you want to make your website successful? Don't assume anything at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, the biggest mistake I've seen very often is that customers come and say, "Oh, we would like to use this extension, this extension, this extension." No. It might be that the combination of the extension makes it more complicated, so you pick different ones just because of having the right combination. Um, the other big uh, mistake was that um, the time tag took too long between the first idea of the website and the final release. So it was very important to be short. Having the project be realized within six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks max. Because otherwise, it's just too long for a website. People are getting more weight and everything. These are the big two points. Do you train your customers first? Do you have to do the daily project? I normally do include a training of half a day. Uh, which uh, gives them a brief introduction for being an editor or publisher. Um, I offer additional trainings uh, in for, let's say, administrative uh, template designers and users and for developers. So these are these part. In the normal project, I include a half a day training, even remotely if it's not possible to go there. Okay, there's no more questions.